Now the next one is this is all going to center around crabgrass. Crabgrass is one of those things where everybody is starting to, to talk about it now. Everybody is starting to see it or what they think is crabgrass. So I want to talk about some different strategies for it. But before we do that, let's just, you know, explore a little bit of the history of crabgrass. So in case you didn't know, crabgrass is actually a warm season grassy weed. It actually comes from the tropics for the most part. And it is from the family Digitaria. So the family, you know, you have genus, species, family, kingdom, phylum, vloom, vloom, zoom, zoom, all those things, right? Digitaria is the family. Now, what does that sound like when you hear that, digitaria? It's all, I think this is all Latin, right? So there's always some words that are rooted in something else that you can hear. Digitaria sounds like digit or finger. And so that's one of the reasons how you can identify crabgrass because it looks like digits or fingers kind of creeping across. It doesn't necessarily grow upright tall. It more spreads out in digits. Now you might actually hear there's different, you know, varieties I think or types of crabgrass. You might hear tropical crabgrass, which is also called Asian crabgrass. That's mostly going to be in the Gulf states and in the Carolinas, so that's mostly what we're going to see down through here. You also have southern crabgrass, even though it's called southern crabgrass, it's throughout the entire southeast, northeast and the southern Midwest as well. There's also smooth crabgrass, and this is the one that most of you see up north, smooth crabgrass, also called hairy crabgrass, that's the entire US and all the way up into Canada. Then you have large crabgrass, actually large crabgrass is called hairy crabgrass. That is also the entire US and Canada. So interesting that they're all called different things, but they're all crabgrass. They all look very similar. The one that you're gonna see the most though is the smooth crabgrass and it's got that lime green look to it, especially this time of year. It's starting to finger out and it's starting to crab its way across the lawn. You'll also see it mentioned earlier, we mentioned the areas along the sidewalks and the driveways that heat up a lot quicker and they cause lawns in Rusty's case there in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. They cause the lawn to go dormant in those areas. Well, the other thing that those heat zones do is they also stimulate the crabgrass to germinate quicker. Now, the reason that that matters is because those heat zones also will break down your pre-emergent barrier for crabgrass, and that's why you almost always see crabgrass around heat zones or edges of sidewalks and driveways, because the heat takes the turf out, makes it go dormant, which means it can't resist the crabgrass, as well as the heat takes out the pre-emergent barrier, so that way the crabgrass has more of an opportunity to invade. So that's typically where you're going to see it. Now, I kind of mentioned crabgrass pre-emergent, things like that, so in case some of you are new here, let's go back through the lifestyle of a crabgrass plant. Now, crabgrass lives fast and it dies hard. It's an annual, and what that means is the plants that you see there this year, they will live this year. When they get to first frost, they will die, and they will not come back again. The only thing that will come back are the seeds that they dropped will germinate afresh or anew next year. So when I say it's an annual plant, it lives fast for one year to reproduce, and then it dies. This is opposed to perennials that are plants that come back year over year. They might go dormant in the winter or might go dormant in the summer, but they come back year after year. Those are perennials. So let me explain the whole life cycle here of crabgrass. Now, we went through this ad nauseum in the springtime, and uh, I think that's good. We'll go back to it because there are a lot of you that are new in the audience, and you're going to be understanding it and, and getting on top of it. So here's how crabgrass works. Let's go back to the spring and let's just do a typical, you know, Indiana lawn because I have a lot of opportunity or I lived in Indiana for a long time and that's where I had most of my experience with dealing with crabgrass, even though we do have it here in the south and that it's mainly something that people find as a problem in cool season grasses, at least when you just look at the majority of the problems that people have with it. So January, we're under snow, we're dormant, there's nothing going on in Indiana. However, the crabgrass seeds are in the lawn. We start to come out of this, we start to come into springtime, you know, and soil temperatures start to come up as the sun comes out and the days get longer into spring. And once soil temperatures begin to near 55 degrees, and of course, if you want to know how do we track soil temperatures, some people like to use a soil thermometer, which is fun. Other people like to use a tool called Greencast, and you can just Google search Greencast tool, and you can look at soil temps there. By the way, that's a fun tool just to play around with. It's one of those things you could end up looking at soil temps all around the country just for fun and understanding different things and learning. So definitely if you go to Greencast, I think it's greencastonline.com, but it's the Greencast tool. It's run by Syngenta, I think, or one of those big companies. But we look at soil temperatures. So once soil temperatures start to reach 55 that is the opening of the window for crabgrass seeds to begin germinating. Now, they don't all germinate at 55. It isn't like they all get together under the ground and they sit there and they watch the temps. They're like, all righty, boys, looks like we're going to be at 55 tomorrow. So when tomorrow hits, we're all going to germinate together. Now, it doesn't really work that way. 
There are obviously different things that can make a seed or allow a seed to germinate or encourage a seed to germinate. One would be moisture, so there's soil depth. Some crabgrass seeds might be six inches down. Some might be only an inch down. Some at the top might germinate quicker than the ones at the bottom. The soil moisture might be different in this part of the lawn than that part of the lawn. Of course, we talked about heat zones already. Some areas heat up faster than others. Shady areas might not heat up as fast as sunny areas. So Crabgrass doesn't all germinate around your lawn all at the same time, but just know that when the soil temps average around 55, that's the opening for the window. Now, crabgrass will germinate all during the spring. You won't see it, though. In fact, you don't actually see it until about now, but it's growing under the ground. It's, it's in the thatch layer. It's, it's starting to move, and as it's moving, it will start to grow all the way up until soil temperatures get across like 70, 75. Once your soil temperatures are over 75, that's kind of the end of it. It becomes a little bit too hot and any seeds that are left in the ground are probably not viable at that time or maybe they're just too deep or whatever. But once soil temps hit 70, 75, then the window kind of closes to prevent it. And that's what I mean by, well, that's what I mean by crabgrass pre-emergence. As they are trying to germinate, as those seeds are eligible for germination, what we do is we put down a product to prevent them from coming up. Now, what the product that we typically use is called prodiamine. That's an active ingredient. There's another one called dithiopyr, which it's actually pronounced dithiopyr. I pronounced it dithiopyr a long time ago on purpose just to see if I could actually get a lot of people pronouncing it wrong, and it actually worked. A lot of people do pronounce it wrong now, so if anybody ever corrects you on that, you can blame the lawn care nut for that one. Uh, but long and the short of it is that we want to put down a, pri a pre-emergent, meaning we want to put something down that we put down before the crabgrass emerges. It is not a pre-germination product. It is a pre-emergent product. And that, that, makes it, that means something because crabgrass seeds just sitting in the lawn, if you put a pre-emergent down and those crabgrass seeds do not germinate, it won't hurt them or help them. It actually won't do anything to them. They will just be sitting there. And that's one of the things we talk about with crabgrass seeds is people think that, that maybe I put a pre-emergent down this year, I won't get any next year. Well, listen, those seeds can sit under the ground for years. And then the, the certain temperatures get just right. The, the lawn gets opened up a certain way and it wakes them up from the deep and then they come up. So keep in mind that a pre-emergent does not kill seeds that are under the ground. But what it does do is it creates a vapor barrier right at the soil line so that once the seeds germinate and they begin to push up, that's when they hit that vapor barrier and they die because what it does is it, re it, it stops cell division. That's how these products work. They interrupt cell division. Now, again, this happens at the very young stages, very, very new germination stages. And I'm probably not using all of the, the terminology correctly, but you guys are getting the idea here is that you put that down prior to the germination happening. And just as they germinate, they hit the vapor barrier and they die. That is a crabgrass pre-emergent. And we put that down in the spring to stop our problem. Now, if you didn't put that down, well, then the problem can rage in and hit you hard. If you did put it down, though, there are still factors that can still make sh see that you get crabgrass in your lawn. And some of those factors can be a lot of rain. And so what we saw this year is temperatures hit 55, people put their pre-emergence down, but we got mass amounts of rain across the country, massive amounts, which broke down the vapor barrier. And so you're seeing a lot of crabgrass germinate. You're also seeing it again around edges where there are heat zones, where the water also washes in a lot harder, faster along, you know, si sidewalks, concrete driveways, gutters overflow, all kinds of things that will wash that vapor barrier away. So back to the life of the crabgrass plant, they start germinating in the, under the ground around that 55 and 70 degree mark, you get into summer and anything that's escaped your vapor barrier or if you didn't apply anything starts to show. And that's why you're seeing now these young crabgrass plants. They may be at the two or three tiller stage and a tiller is just what it sounds like. It's a new leaf zone or a new node. That's a tiller. And you can see them at the two, three, maybe even four tiller stage now starting to creep across. So what you have to do at this point is you can't prevent the crabgrass anymore. Now you have to go after it with a post-emergent. Instead of a pre-emergent, we have to go after it with a post-emergent weed control. And that's what we're going to talk about today are the post-emergent weed controls that we want to hit it with. Now, before we get into that, I want you to understand it's important to get on top of the crabgrass fairly quickly because it's going to be going to seed and you'll see the seed heads popping up. When it goes to seed, that means it's now eligible to reproduce itself. It's eligible to drop more seeds and those seeds, you can't kill them. If you go out and you spray anything on those seeds, they're not going to die. They're not. 
our weed controls don't work on seed. They have to be hitting emerged plants, our post-emergence do. So once the seeds are dropped, it's pretty much too late for you. You're probably going to have a problem next year. But again, you can get on it with pre-emergence and this and this and that. So you want to get to them before seeding. So the one thing I'm going to tell you is when you have a crabgrass outbreak, it is important to continually mow. Each crabgrass plant can drop up to 150,000 seeds in a season. So just think about that. When you're going after crabgrass, 150,000 seeds from one plant can be dropped. That's why we talk about getting in there and mowing quickly. You don't want that to happen. You don't want that product or you don't want those seeds to spread 150,000 per plant. Now, again, that's if you leave them to go. You just leave them alone and let them grow. By mowing them off, you can reduce quite a bit of that. Mow as much as you can. Now, people ask, should I catch the clippings? I mean, Sure, if you have a lot of crabgrass and you have a lot of crabgrass seed heads that are up, then certainly go ahead and it's logical to go ahead and catch, bag that, and take that away. But for the most part, you don't have to go out of your way. Just mow often like we talk about every three to four days. Don't let them go to seed. Keep mowing them down. If you do that, you're going to just reduce your problem overall. But the other thing you want to do, because that is a tough battle is I always say first try to mow it out, and that's what you want to do. You're not going to be able to mow the crabgrass out by killing it, but you can mow out the seeds. You can keep the seeds from coming in for the next year. But then the next thing is you are going to have to treat it with a post-emergent weed control. So let's go ahead and talk about those things because crabgrass is going to continue raging, and it will continue spreading, and it will continue taking over your lawn. The thing about crabgrass is if you don't get on top of it, not only will it drop more seeds, but the areas that it dies, that, or that it's in right now, will be bare spots after it dies. So let me just end up the crabgrass life cycle. I've been munching on this. I've been going down this road a long time. I want to get back to the products here. But once you get your first frost, so in Indiana, first frost, I don't know, it comes sometime in the fall usually. And yeah, obviously it comes in the fall, Hain. You know, sometime probably in like October. So once you get to like October and you get your first frost or freeze or deep freeze or whatever term I'm using here, the crabgrass will turn purple and it will die, but it will drop its final batch of seeds right around that time. And what will happen is that plant will not come back the next year. All the seeds will be around it. But the nice thing or the smart thing about crabgrass and how it's evolved is that plant dies and it leaves a bare spot, which is going to be open ground, which is going to be seed to soil contact for its seed or it's for its seeds that it dropped the year before is going to land right on bare ground and that then allows those to germinate bigger the next year so what happens is not only does crabgrass look bad in your lawn but once it dies it leaves a bare spot for more seeds to germinate and you can see how it continues to take over and take over and take over to the point where i've seen lawns that are 100 percent crabgrass and they don't actually look too bad they just look lime green it's not a great turf grass but i mean if you really wanted to go that far with it it's going to be fine you're just not going to have a lawn in the early spring uh to speak of but you know don't do it. I, I don't even know why I mentioned that. Don't don't have a crabgrass lawn, even though I have seen plenty of them. So that's kind of how that lifestyle works. That's how that, that goes about it. So again, our two treatment options are then a pre-emergent in the spring. And if you miss that, or even if you miss that, some escapes, then it's a post-emergent now in the summer, and you need to get on it as quick as you can. So-